Hey friends, good morning, happy Monday. I hope y'all are doing well, having a fabulous day. Hey, I am excited to share another round of daily encouragement from the Bible, as has been a pattern I've started since the, the coronavirus pandemic first hit our soil many, many, many months ago now. Uh, here we are, last month we looked at the book of Genesis, at the very beginning of the Bible, to see where we could find encouragement there. Today, I want to look at uh, the Gospel of Mark in the New Testament and see what we can find there. So, so when you look at the, the beginning of, of the New Testament, you know, why, why not start with Matthew? Why, why start with Mark? Mark was actually the guy who probably first published his, his gospel. Before Matthew got to get his out to people, Mark got his out to people. And so I want to look at it in Mark as probably some of the, the earliest records of who Jesus is, was, what Jesus did, how Jesus made an impact in people around him, and see how we can find encouragement from there. Today, I want to look at Mark chapter 1, just the, the first few verses, 1 through 8, and see what's there. In, in Mark writes this, In the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord. Make his paths straight. John came baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him, and they were baptized by him in the Jordan River, confessing their sins. John wore camel's hair garment with a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, One who is more powerful than me is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the strap of his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So, so there's so many cool things about this passage and about what's going on. Because you see the beginnings of, uh, of God at work in, in the first century world. How literally God was fulfilling prophecy that had happened some 600 years before them. Isaiah lived in 600 BC, 600 years before Jesus, and predicted the coming of Jesus. And said, as a precursor to this, there would be someone that would come that would be like Elijah. Who would literally declare that, that there is a Messiah that's coming. He would make the paths straight. And so then, then John the Baptist enters the scene, and John the Baptist calls people to repent, to get right with God, to confess their sins. And so there's almost this, this revival of recognizing we're sinful people. We desperately need God to intervene in our lives, and a hunger for God to intervene in their lives. It was happening through John the Baptist. But I love what John the Baptist says, and I think this is what can challenge us more than anything. John the Baptist says, one who is more powerful than me is coming after me. I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie the strap of his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. He literally says, look, there's somebody coming that's going to be a heck of a lot better than me. And when he comes, he's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. He's going to give you things that I can't give you because he's going to give you supernatural power, supernatural authority to walk with God in this connection to God that, that isn't possible just through me. It's not by human nature that it can happen. He understood that his ministry one day would fold and would decrease and that Jesus would increase in and through him. I think there's a challenge there for each of us. Not only do we recognize God as at work around us and should we recognize when God is moving and it's not us, but, but something supernatural that's beyond us. But we should always have the capacity and the ability to let go when, when God is doing something to recognize that God is bigger than us, that, that, that everything we do, the impacts that we can make for people around us, it's God that's at work, not us. Um, God must always increase in our lives. We must decrease. We, we, we're supposed to, to carry ourselves with humility, to run after Jesus, knowing that we want him and his glory to shine through us, not, not for us to shine through. So it's a question of who gets the credit and, and how are we willing to, to give up that credit to God so he can get the glory or do we want it for ourselves? In the case of John the Baptist, he chose to give that up. And I think in our lives, as we watch God at work in our lives, we have a challenge as well to watch God get the glory and say, we want God to increase in our midst. We want to decrease. So the challenge, the encouragement, is that we can find incredible peace. We can watch God do awesome things as we surrender to him and as we ask him to do what only he can do, as we ask him to increase and us to decrease. I do want to end by praying for us. Uh, if you don't know, however, the hope that comes from walking with Jesus, you can find incredible levels of hope and peace by walking with God through Jesus. We're, we're going to read over the next several weeks that, that Jesus was indeed who he said he was. He said that he was the way, the truth, and the life, the only way to the Father, the only way to reconciliation and peace with God. And then he proved it 
by dying on the cross as a substitute for the brokenness that we all experience in the world around us and rose from the grave to prove he had the power and the authority to defeat sin and death through the cross. If you don't know the hope that comes from walking with Jesus, you can find it simply by saying yes to him. I do want to end by praying for us. And so God, today, I lift up to you each of my friends and I pray that your grace and your peace would fill them. Lord, may you guide our steps. May you help us today and every day to walk in humility, to embrace you more, ourselves less. May you enable us and give us the supernatural ability to give you the credit with everything that we do. Lord, we don't want to make ourselves great. We want to make you great. And so I pray that you would help us to shine your light for everyone around us. Lord, I pray for my friends who may be fighting coronavirus. Lord, may you give them strength in their lungs and their immune systems. I pray, Lord, for my friends whose marriages are not doing well. May you help them to find reconciliation and healing that only comes from you. And Lord, may you guide each of us today to run after you more. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, hey, thank you, friends, so much for joining me. I look forward to seeing you back here again tomorrow for another round of daily encouragement from the Bible. Hey, blessings.